Okay, here we go. We're in the stomach now. So remember, we went through the mouth. The stomach will actually be in two videos. Um, we're going to break it down into the glands and then the different phases of what happens with food when it's in your stomach. Okay, so your stomach, which you can actually live without um, with stomach cancer. They can actually remove it with some of the uh, weight loss, bariatric kind of surgeries that you see. They can actually make your stomach much smaller or actually go around it um, so that you don't can't consume large amounts of food. A lot of the bariatric type of surgeries, they make your stomach much smaller so that you get full very quickly and you can't consume large amounts of food. So the stomach is loaded with glands. So we talked about hormones and what they do and how they regulate things. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the different glands, what they secrete, and give you an idea what the stomach actually looks like up close and personal. So you've got these, here's your mucosa layer, and here's your uh, submucosa, and you see these glands here. Again, there's several glands that will be secreting different things. Remember that the stomach is very, very acidic, and we'll talk about how these glands contribute to that acidity and also allow the stomach to tolerate it. Obviously, the environment has to be such that it can handle a very low pH. Okay, glands have several functions. Okay, glands have several functions. What I would recommend with these is, yes, write them down, and I've probably given them to you, but on another piece of paper, kind of make a concept map. Uh, draw a square, put the gland, and then in other squares coming off that box, like we've done with other things, write down what they do. So make sure with this to help it stick in your memory that you're putting it somewhere else, okay? That you're writing it down in a different way so that you can see it, and that's so you go through the process of actually writing it down. So there are what are called mucus neck cells. These secrete mucus. Now what this is going to do function-wise is this is going, this mucus is going to allow the stomach to tolerate the very low pH. Um, so we're going to see how and why and how the stomach gets to be so acidic. And notice the pH here can range from anywhere from 1.5 to 3.5, which is very low. This is one way that it protects itself. It secretes this mucus. These mucus neck cells, which you can see here, are going to secrete mucus, which is going to protect the lining of the stomach from the acidity, okay, from the high hydrogen concentration that we're going to see in the stomach. And there's also some surface epithelial cells that are going to secrete this mucus, again, with the goal of protecting the stomach, pretty much protecting the stomach from itself, protecting it from that low pH. Okay. All right, so how does the stomach, the mucus layer, protect the stomach? Um, this mucus layer has a lot of bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is a base, so it's going to kind of offset or balance out or neutralize that acidity. Um, the epithelial cells in the stomach are very much, they're joined by what are called gap junctions, which we may have talked about briefly, but they are very much interconnected. So that keeps that hydrochloric acid from being able to get between the cells. Now, because it's your stomach and foodstuffs going in there, you're going to wear away at this epithelial lining, but they are replaced very quickly very quickly in the stomach. Again, by having healthy epithelial cells, it will help it uh, protect itself from that acidity, okay, from that acidity. So what are ulcers? Now, if I asked you 20 years ago, or even 10 years ago, or maybe even now, what causes an ulcer, some of you would say stress does. If you asked your parents, depending on their age, they might say stress does or diet. Those things can make ulcers worse, but they are not usually the cause. Um, the number one cause is actually a bacteria. Uh, medications can also lead to ulcers, the wearing away of that mucus layer. If you get rid of that mucus layer, the stomach no longer has that protection from the low pH, and the acidity can eat away at it, causing an open wound or an ulcer. Okay, so if you get a breach of that mucosal lining. Now, before you would get an ulcer, you would get something called gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach lining. Gastric ulcer is when you get, when you start to erode away at the stomach wall. And so you have an open wound. This can lead to a severe hemorrhage. hemorrhage. A person can die from this um, if, if it's not caught or if they, if that lead, or if that wearing away hits a major blood vessel going to the stomach, that can cause a massive bleeding or hemorrhage. 
Most are caused by a bacteria called H. pylori. Um, a large number of us have this bacteria. In most of us, it is inactive if it is in you. Um, in some people, though, it becomes more active, and then it will eat away at the mucus lining, which then allows the hydrochloric acid to eat away at the stomach lining. Some facts. So 90% of ulcers are caused by H. pylori. I'll give you a little side story here. There was a doctor in Australia who believed that, this is when most people believe that ulcers were caused by stress. And so Milk of Magnesia, Mylanta, all of these different companies and Rolaids were coming up with all the stuff that you could coat your stomach and they were telling you to modify your diet and blah, blah, blah. And this one scientist found, he looked at a large group of people with ulcers and found that a large amount of them had this bacteria. So he speculated initially, he kind of made a correlation here. Well, a lot of people with ulcers have this bacteria, so maybe this bacteria is causing it. And people just, he couldn't get, he couldn't get, uh, he couldn't get presentations at conferences. They told him he was nuts. He couldn't get published. They said it was ridiculous. This wasn't what caused it. And he was just, the more research he did, he was just, he was just sure that there was some relationship here. So what he ended up doing, and I don't recommend doing this, is he took a beaker of this H. pylori and he actually drank it. And he, he became his own experiment. And he monitored how his stomach felt, what it looked like over time. And over a few weeks, he started to develop gastritis. Um, now, his wife made him stop at that point and said, you're done. You need to cure yourself. And so he gave himself the antibiotic. But that they, people finally listened to him. Um, he finally got published. He finally started presenting. And he ended up winning a Nobel Prize in medicine for his discovery of the role that H. pylori plays in, in ulcers. So that's kind of a cool story. But like I said, I don't recommend drinking things too that can kill you uh, to prove your point. So what will happen is the bacteria burrows. It goes through the mucus lining. And again, the protective layer is gone. Um, 10 to 20% of those infected with the bacteria get the ulcer. So again, like I said, you may have it and not have a problem. Um, sometimes though, something may activate it and that may cause an ulcer. Okay, so the other 90% seem to be protected by active bacterial engines from within the stomach, so they don't get it. Okay. Um, you can actually detect if you're infected with this H. pylori by a breath test. Pretty simple test. And then it can be treated with two weeks of antibiotics. So for years, people were taking milk and magnesia, watching their diet, stress, blah, blah, blah. And it turns out that in most cases, in most cases, it was this H. pylori. In other cases, it's usually medications that may cause the wearing away of the stomach lining. All right, so this shows you what a gastric ulcer looks like. I don't know for sure if this person, they're obviously dead because their stomach's open like this on a blue thing, but um, whether the gastric ulcer caused it or not, I'm not sure, but it shows you what it looks like. All right, so that was the mucus neck cells. The second type of gastric gland that you're going to see are called parietal cells. They are called parietal cells. What they do is they secrete intrinsic factor. Uh, this is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. Uh, if Depending on what year you're listening to this, um, vitamin B12 is necessary for the production of red blood cells and also the other types of blood cells. Uh, pernicious anemia is if you don't have this intrinsic factor, uh, you cannot produce blood, proper red blood cells because you're lacking um, this intrinsic factor. Um, I have gone through a vitamin B12 deficiency. Not as severe, it affected my platelets more than anything. We don't know exactly why, but for some reason I do not absorb vitamin B12 in my stomach as I should. We don't know exactly why. It's not worth all that testing, but I have to get a vitamin B12 shot every uh, month to make sure I keep my uh, blood cells healthy. So that's what parietal cells do. The second thing they do is they secrete the hydrochloric acid that's going to give the stomach its low pH. Uh, so why do we need, why does the stomach have to be at a low pH? Uh, one is, we're going to talk about this later, we're going to convert pepsinogen into pepsin. Pepsinogen is an inactive form of the enzyme pepsin. Pepsin is going to help digest, chemically digest proteins into amino acids. So what the hydrochloric acid will do in the presence of proteins, it will convert the pepsinogen into pepsin. Okay. So that's one reason we need the hydrochloric acid. The second reason we need it is to kill microorganisms. Like we said, when you consume something from the outside, you're very susceptible to bringing things in that can make you sick. We talked about how salivary amylase can help act as an anti or 
not salivary amylase, sorry, take that back, that saliva acts as an antibacterial agent. This hydrochloric acid is even a stronger um, microorganism killer. So this low pH, a lot of the things you might consume when that fly would poop on your food would be killed by this hydrochloric acid. It also is going to denature proteins, which means it's going to break it or change its shape. Um, so if you eat meat, you consume it, okay, it gets in your stomach. We need to kind of change the shape of the protein so that the enzymes can work on it, so that the pepsin I was talking about up here can start to digest the proteins. We're going to need to change the shape of it, and that's one of the things the hydrochloric acid will do. Okay. Don't worry about this bottom one, okay, you can take that one out. That's not that important. So that's the role that hydrochloric acid plays. And again, that's going to be, the hydrochloric acid is going to be secreted by these parietal cells. Okay, so how does, how do we get the stomach to be this acidic? I'm going to give you some of these, okay, but I'm going to try to simplify it for you. So as blood comes in, okay, as blood comes in, a blood supply is coming into the stomach, what will happen is, in the presence of the parasympathetic or when the parasympathetic nervous system is active, that rest and digest part of your autonomic nervous system, what will happen is that will cause the blood to actively transport, okay, active transport, got to go back to AMP1, active transport is going against the gradient. So you have already have a high concentration of hydrogen inside the stomach. We're going to actively transport from low to high against the gradient, so we're going to need ATP. So when the parasympathetic nervous system is in control, the blood going into the stomach, providing the stomach with nutrients, is going to actively transport against the gradient, needing ATP, hydrogen into the stomach lining. So that's going to give you a higher concentration of hydrogen in the stomach. Okay. To balance out the charges, when hydrogen goes in, chloride's going to go, and they're going to bond, and then you're going to get hydrochloric acid, okay, which is the stomach. Okay. So just know that you have both the hydrogen and the chloride. And then what happens is the blood coming out from the stomach, because this hydrogen has left the bloodstream, the blood leaving, it's called an alkaline tide. It's going to be more basic because the hydrogen has left the bloodstream and gone into the stomach, okay, gone into the stomach. So no hydrogen is, is actively transported against the gradient in the presence of the parasympathetic when the parasympathetic nervous system is in control. You don't know to need to know the details, but know there's chloride there, and then they will bond to find the, to, to make hydrochloric acid, and that the blood, when it leaves the stomach, is going to be more basic. It's going to be an alkaline tide. And then the rest of the body, as the blood travels around, will have to kind of balance out that basic blood. Okay, that basic blood. Okay, the next type of cell you need to know are chief cells. They secrete that pepsinogen. So remember, hydrochloric acid is going to convert pepsinogen into pepsin, and pepsin's the active enzyme. Well, where'd pepsinogen come from? It comes from these chief cells. Okay, it comes from these chief cells. Again, pepsinogen is inactive form of the enzyme when not in the presence of a higher HCL or hydrochloric acid concentration. So when there's a protein in the stomach, the parasympathetic nervous system you just ate, the parasympathetic nervous system becomes dominant. The blood then actively transports the hydrogen into the stomach, becoming more acidic. When that acidity goes up, the acidity goes down to become more acidic. The pH goes down, the acidity goes up. When the pH goes down, the acidity goes up. More hydrochloric acid, that pepsinogen that comes from the chief cells, is going to be converted into pepsin, and the pepsin will digest, chemically digest, or start the chemical digestion of proteins. Okay, of proteins. Okay, so pepsin is an enzyme that breaks down proteins. Now, even though we have the start of chemical digestion in the stomach with pepsin, most of the chemical digestion is not going to occur in the stomach. It's going to actually occur in the small intestine. The last type of cells that you need to know for the stomach are the enteroendocrine cells. 
These are going to secrete several hormones, gastrin, cholecystokinin, and somatostatin, plus others. Now these, the gastrin and the cholecystokinin, we will talk about when we get to the next phase, when we talk about the different phases of the stomach, so what happens, the different phases of what occurs when your stomach has a, a, has a chime in it or food in it. All right. So again, what I would do is go back to each of these cell types, starting with the mucus cells, all right, somewhere in a different kind of form, write down mucus cell in a box, and then write boxes off it. What does that mucus cell do? Okay, what does that do? Understand the basics of ulcers. Here's another type of cell. One box off it, it secretes intrinsic factor. What is that necessary for? Second thing it does, secretes hydrochloric acid. Okay, what is it going to do? Next box is chief cells. Okay, they secrete pepsinogen. Connect that. Okay, connect that to the other types of cells. Connect that to the parietal cells and how they secrete hydrochloric acid. And then your last one, okay? So make sure you know these basic types of cells, glands, what they secrete and the role that they play. Uh, more of this, we'll talk about more of this in the next phase, all right, when we get into the gastric phases. And that will be the next video. Okay, again, make sure you can line these up with the objectives.